So Lisa, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, Lisa, you are the CEO of the Henson Company, is that correct? Yes. So what does that entail? What are your What are your duties as CEO? Well, I run the company. Um, Brian Henson is now the chairman of the board, so he's also very involved with the company, but he's also he's freed up more time for directing and show running his TV shows. And I am uh, day-to-day, almost every day in the office, um, working on both the business and the creative side. And I'm kind of the de facto head of production of the company, too, because I'm working on almost all of our productions, either as an executive producer or in some way supervising production. So what sort of productions are you working on right now? Well, we have just launched Word Party on Netflix, and we have three more tell, you know, series premieres coming up. So we're actually within, I think, a nine-month period launching four new shows. Oh, wow. And that's, that's pretty exciting because, you know, we have continuing shows like Dinosaur Train. We want to go back into production on Doozers as well. But this is four new shows between Word Party, um, Dot, Julie's Green Room, and Splash and Bubbles. So it's been a very, very busy year for us. That's fantastic. So uh, one of the things that, that we wanted to talk about with you uh, is what's going on down in Atlanta at the Center for Puppetry Arts. Um, we've seen some pictures of the new exhibit, and it looks fantastic. Unfortunately, we have not been able to make it down ourselves to Oh, Atlanta. none of you guys have gone? Well, nobody, we, nobody we have friends. Has been there? No, we have friends who've been there. We, we had someone uh, who went down and covered the, uh, the opening for us, uh, which was great. Oh, great. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm, personally, I just want to see it with my own eyes. Uh, so how did that come you really about? To, you, really have to, you really have to see it. It's such an incredible um, exhibit. It's, you know, they built a museum wing for the center. They always had an exhibition space there, but they built a whole new section to the museum, which is only a museum space. I mean, to the center, and that new wing is a museum wing. So the wing has two parts. It has the Jim Henson exhibition, which is a permanent exhibit, and then they also have, um, I think they call World of Puppetry, which is all kinds of other puppetry traditions from around the world. And both exhibits are incredibly designed. And so when you go to visit the museum, you can have the pop culture nostalgia experience of the Jim Henson exhibit, but you can also have a very educational, very stimulating, very cool experience experience with the world of puppetry exhibit so it's a it's they did an amazing job and the exhibits are kind of perfectly mounted and there really is no other thing like that there's no permanent uh puppetry museum nor even a center for puppetry like the center for puppetry arts in atlanta i it's my personal feeling that i we should think of them as the national Center for Puppetry Arts because there really isn't another one, even though it's called the Atlanta Center for Puppetry Arts. Hmm. Uh, so I, it feels obvious why you chose uh, the Center for Puppetry Arts for for this kind of exhibit. It's just because of you know Jim's influence on puppetry. But um, there's there's a, a deeper connection to the CPA for the Henson Company, isn't that right? Like yes, like... he was there at the ribbon cutting with Vince Anthony, and he also supported um, their work and Tom Ludwig's own performance work through the Jim Henson Foundation. And after he passed away, you know, the foundation under Cheryl Henson's guidance continued to support the performances there. So we've been involved with them through the foundation um, in terms of supporting their their performances. Um, and, you know, we, we were just really excited to put – such a large collection of hands and puppets and memorabilia and props and costumes and everything into this, you know, this place which is dedicated to puppetry. We also have a fairly large collection at the Museum of the Moving Image in uh, Queens, and we also have um, the very historic puppets. Are the original Sam and Friends puppets are at the Smithsonian. So there are three. There are three places you can currently see Muppets and Jim Henson um, collections. But there will also be 
pieces in the Academy Museum in Los Angeles when that opens from the feature film. So there will be ultimately about four places. But the, the, the biggest of the collections is at the Center for Puppetry Art. It's actually been a very, it's been in a, a very concerted effort on behalf of uh, the family and also um, Bonnie Erickson in particular to take everything that we had in storage, which was monumental, and kind of curate what we had into museum quality exhibits. So Bonnie was very, very careful with what she distributed to the different institutions and um, to make sure that, you know, everything, all the different productions are well represented. And the Center for Puppetry Arts has completed a lot of historical restoration on those puppets as well, which was a, a, a secondary large task, because in addition to sort of creating a compelling exhibit that's beautiful, all puppets had to be restored, and, um, you know, the foam puppets kind of disintegrate and turn into toast. Hmm. So it was, a, it was a big job to to make them all sort of last in a permanent state. Uh, so, uh, to, to shift gears for a second, uh, there's an event coming up, uh, at the Henson Company in LA, uh, t- in September to honor Dave Goals. Um, can you talk a little bit about what this event is going to be? Yeah, this is something that we've initiated because, um, we as a family and also the company really wanted to raise awareness for the Center for Puppetry Arts outside of Atlanta. Um, they have a lot of local institutional support in Atlanta um, from philanthropists and uh, Atlanta families and co- companies that support them. But I think that the arts community and um, Hollywood don't know enough about the center, and we wanted to, as they say, raise awareness for the for the center. And by doing those, this is our first fundraiser that we've organized on on our lot, really for anybody, but, you know, specifically, I think, the first fundraiser for the Center for Puppetry Arts outside of Atlanta, and, you know, we're excited to to uh, put on a night that will focus completely on puppetry and hopefully attract the interest of puppeteers and and people who are in the puppetry community to come and support the, the puppetry center. You know, we know that puppeteers in general, are not the richest group, <laughs> but this organization is for puppeteers and puppet builders and puppet producers and production companies. And you know, even though they, those people may not, you know, those artists might not be the wealthiest artists in the arts community. Still, this this is their center, and we hope that we can interest you know people all throughout the puppetry world to come and support it at this fundraiser. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and, and since you're the, the purpose is to support um, the museum in Atlanta, why did you choose to have the event in L.A.? Well, they have an annual fundraiser in Atlanta already called the String Fling, mm-hmm. and so we wanted to add to that, and if this is a success, we would have potentially more, um, more events or at least an annual event. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, we don't think people know enough about this center. So this is, that's one of the reasons we're doing it outside of Atlanta. Um, and, and that's great. The, the, you know, the fact that you're, you've chosen Dave Goals as the person to honor, I think is wonderful because. Uh, oh, great. Yeah. Yes. I'm so happy. I mean, he, he, it's so interesting. I mean, he keeps a low profile, but he's <laughs> at this point, somebody that, you know, everybody should know about and. You know, he's so deserving of the honor and so it's deserving of the attention. He's such an important puppeteer in the in the history and ongoing legacy of the Muppet. And uh, as I said, he kind of keeps—he's such a modest fellow. He keeps a low profile, but he really deserves to be honored. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And it's and it's great to have an opportunity to honor someone without um, mourning them, which unfortunately we've been doing far too much in the past few years. Uh, so to, uh, change gears again, uh, the last time you and I spoke, uh, it was, uh, for an informational interview about, uh, Turkey Hollow, which had not yet premiered. Um. Oh, yeah. So now the special has aired and, and it's been out for a few months. Um, how do you feel about how well it was received? 
Well, I think it was, it probably got a little bit more of a mixed response than I hoped for. Um, I think I, you know, I like to, I think it's going to show in, in fact, I'm fairly certain it's going to air in, in Canada this year. It was, it was shot in Canada and originally it was intended to be shown in Canada first. Um, but then when Lifetime um, licensed it, they asked to have the Canadian premiere push back. Because I don't know if you know that Canadian Thanksgiving is a month earlier than oh. than the American Thanksgiving. I did know that, so but I wouldn't have even thought was, that that was an issue. Yeah, so it was held. It was held in Canada until um, until this year. Um, you know, I'm really, really fond of the movie, but yes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure everybody loves it as much as I did. Well, I thought it was charming. Was and, your, you know, it was. I thought it was a really sweet I movie. I think it is too. Uh, and I love the puppets. I think it, is, it was there. You know what? It was a little bit of a self-conscious movie because it was um, a little bit purposefully nostalgic and retro. And I don't know. I'm not sure if everybody got that, but <laughs> I love it. Well, and it's interesting that uh, when you talk about it being retro, how um, despite the fact that the the puppetry techniques that were used were really high tech and and you know pushing the boundaries of what we've seen before just the fact that you decided to use puppets feels retro because every other special has cg these days well you know what actually even when you say that it's super high tech we didn't use any technology in that that wasn't well known in the 1990s Mm, (laughs) i think you know i mean animatronics if you only use animatronics and don't enhance them with cg you're really talking about you know somewhat old technology um we you know we love the animatronic style and there's there aren't it doesn't it isn't called for as often nowadays with cg sure um but i think if it were truly a a you know up-to-date contemporization of of puppetry would probably be a blend of puppetry and cg Mm -hmm. and we used almost completely puppets without cg and that there were only just there were a couple of effect shots, which you can, I think you can probably tell which, which ones those are. Sure. Uh, so, uh, with the Henson Company, speaking of, of all the different um, uh, pro- uh, projects that you guys work on, uh, I've noticed that over the past few years, you've kind of been diversifying beyond just puppetry, because you've had uh, animated series like The Doozers, and you've had children's books, um, and uh, you've been work- working on films that don't ha- have puppets at all, like um, the Alexander and the Terrible No Good Day. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It's so funny. Yesterday, somebody referred to that as Alexander, etc. Yeah, I, no, I, <laughs> I couldn't even tell you. Funny. It's like I should start calling it Alexander, etc. <laughs> um, so, uh, since these uh, these projects are like almost completely free from your father's influence, how do you see them fitting into the overall company? Well, we really only work in a few genres as a company. So we do family entertainment, both animation and live action. And for older for older audiences, we do alternative puppetry and fantasy. So compared to other production companies, I would say we we're, we're, we work within a, a pretty small um, circle. Sure. <laughs> Circle's the wrong word, but it, there is a there's a world of projects that we will consider for the for the company, and there it's still a pretty small group. You know, we're not going to just we, we don't do crime thrillers or romantic comedies or you know, R-rated comedies that don't have puppets. You know, we there's a lot of things that we do not produce, but we have widened the we've widened the genres a bit um, in the last few years. Uh, but it's been gradual. Like, you know, first we started producing digital puppetry, mm-hmm. which was our sort that's our hybrid between animation and puppetry. And then we also have certain animated projects that didn't really lend themselves to the digital puppetry and lend themselves to straight up CG animation. Those were Dinosaur Train and Doozers. Mm-hmm. And it, it really has to do less with the design of the characters and more with the scope of the world. If, we, if they have the characters have to have 
have to travel all over the world or meet new character, multiple new characters in every episode, really doesn't lend itself to our digital puppetry. Um, at the same time, then we and, we, and this year we've added in 2D animation, and we have Dot, which is Randy Zuckerberg's um, creation. <laughs> it's wonderful, and we'll be launching that in September on Sprout and on the CBC in Canada. Um, so, yeah, that will be the first 2D show that we've done since Muppet Babies. But let us not forget that Muppet Babies was done when my father was alive and it was 2D animation. So, right. you know, there is there might be a perception that we're doing things that he wasn't doing, but I don't think it's I don't think we've strayed too far from the genres he was working in. Uh, so, in a perfect and we all, and we oh, never and we never stop doing puppets. You know, so right. we have we usually have at least one puppet production going at all times, and right now. It's, it's Julie's Green Room, which is a really traditional um, style of puppet production. Yeah, that's great. I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. I want to go back to the CPA uh, fundraiser. Yeah. Because I feel like talking about it on your site would be really good because, you know, we're hoping that – because we announced that this event was happening, and – I kind of got the feeling that people thought it was a private event, you know? And so one of the things we wanted to do was make sure people know that it's a fundraiser that you can buy tickets, that you can come and meet Dave Gold or meet other Henson people, come and see our lot. You know, we're really going to try to make sure it's a fan-friendly event and that, you know, people will be able to... I don't know if everyone will get to talk to Dave Gold. Like, you know, he will be the person who's being honored. But of course. everybody who who buys the VIP ticket will be able to have a tour of our lot and, you know, meet me and Brian and Heather and Cheryl or whoever else is, is there as a part of the VIP greeting. And then we will, um, you know, we, we want people to, you know, have a good fan experience there. So that's, re- I mean, one of the main reasons that we wanted to connect with you today was just to make sure that people know that they can buy tickets and then, you know, we want to see them there. Yeah, and we'll definitely do our, our best to make sure people know. Uh, I, I do understand the tickets are on sale now. Um, they do, is it am I, if I remember correctly? They start at two hundred and fifty dollars. Is that is that right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and what uh, what actual what will actually be happening at the event? What 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 uh, what will be what will you be doing? It's it's mostly a performance. It's not a gala dinner. It's not formal. It mm-hmm. should be fun and primarily performance driven. And Dave will and be performing. A, the, and then the VIP and then the VIP ticket includes the cocktail party and and uh, you know food and free booze. Oh, great. <laughs> and other good things. Right. Well, sounds like fun. If I if I was was in LA, I would definitely do my best to be there as well. Yeah, and spread the word at least, you yeah. know, because you guys of all people know, you know the people that would probably most enjoy doing this. Yes. Well, you know them more than I know them. Oh, like, right. you, know, you probably know the people that would want to go. And so we want to make sure that those people who would enjoy it would at least consider coming. Yes. And, and like you said, there, there may be um, more fundraising events in the future. Um, hopefully. It sort of yeah. depends on, you know, how this one does. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, not that I would suggest that anyone skip this one and wait for the next one, but, uh, hopefully if they are unable to attend this one, maybe there'll be more opportunities for, for more fun events with you guys. Yes. Well, the other thing that we thought would is fun is that if people can't come at all, there's also a program, and we suggested that people could buy, um, they could buy ads, not really an ad, but, you know, you could send a greeting to Dave Colt, you know, in the program if oh, anyone nice is, idea. is so inclined. Oh, very nice. So, uh... Well, thanks for the kind, thanks for the kind words about Turkey Hollow. Oh, of course, of course. I mean, I, I, I love to see the Henson Company doing something that feels, you know, it feels like the kind of thing that I would have enjoyed, you know, when I was, when I was younger and maybe when Jim was still around, uh... You know, that's, that's charming to me. That's sweet. Also, you know, we're, that's sort of a, a part of our business that we, we do tend to keep that up. They're doing some low-budget, lower-budget movies and long-form things for television. 
Um, it used to be made for home videos, so they don't really do. Nobody really does that anymore. <laughs> right. um, we have we have always, you know, made a certain number of projects kind of with with that scope. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them come out really good. You know, uh, about 10 years ago, I did Mirror Mask, and it was a made-for-home video. And it was, sure. It was like four million. It was a, what, a $4 million project, and I'm so proud of it. And, you know, it really couldn't have been better for, you know, in originality and artistry and everything and for that very modest budget. So it's something that we like to keep. Um, we like to keep doing those. It's also a great way to develop talent and to be a little bit maybe a little bit more experimental. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love to see you guys keep doing that stuff, you know, in conjunction with all the, um, you know, the kids series that you're doing and, uh, you know, the movies that we, we hear about that are in development and pre-production and all that. Um, I know. Feature films, feature films are quite frustrating, not only for <laughs> us, but for the, fans, for the fans too, because when they get put into development, the fans hear about it and then it's very frustrating for them. Why have I been told about this and it's not going to come out for years and years? And that's really just the movie business. Yeah. You know, it's one of the, it's, it's actually smarter not never to talk about your development because once you start talking about the development, then somebody is immediately disappointed that it isn't coming out in a matter of weeks. You know? Right. So it's, it's, like I said, it's kind of better never to speak about development, but people always find out and it gets written about. And then we, um, then we're managing expectations while really we're just going through our normal process of, of production, which has, you know, it has its, um, things move slowly, they move quickly, but nothing moves, uh, immediately. Of course, yeah. And speaking of that, uh, is there anything that you're able to tease to us so that, uh, that it's in production right now? Or pre-production, or, or you're thinking <laughs> well, about doing? A, there is, yes, it's very interesting. There is a project that's being made um, at Sony Pictures, Sony Pictures Animation, um, which is called The Star, and um, it's been in development for 20 years. So <laughs> when, you know, when somebody says, you know, why, why do things take so long? I, I could honestly point to that and say, that one has taken the longest. Huh. So that's a project that Brian and I were prepping in the late nineties and it's a it's a movie about the animals and the native at the nativity. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, started, stopped, started, stopped, put on the shelf for many years. And now it's finally being made twenty years later. It's really incredible. Wow, that's and now great. it's being made as an animated project. Wow, fantastic. Uh so, so it's just it's just indicative of how long things can take. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, just to wrap up, uh, do you have any message that you'd like to pass along to our readers or to the fans of uh, the work of the Henson Company? You know, we appreciate that people remain interested in what we're doing, and in this particular case, on this particular day when we're talking about the Center for Puppetry Arts and um, and raising money for them, really, we want you know to say that that is an institution that can preserve all this great work that everybody loves and have it in one place where you can go and you know, physically see the puppets and, you know, physically connect with um, with what you love. So it's something we hope everyone has a chance to do is go to visit the Center for Puppetry Arts. Well, fantastic. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us on this call. Um, I really feel like we learned a lot. Uh, I, I hope that everyone <laughs> listening to this is going to head down to the Center for Puppetry Arts in Atlanta, or we'll hopefully, if they're in the uh, L.A. area... Or if we'll... they're in L.A., go to the fundraiser. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Well, please keep us updated on other projects you're working on. Um, thank you for all of your work with the Henson Company. We're really excited to see what you guys are doing next. And uh, hopefully all we'll right. talk to you again thank soon. You so much.